Lord gave me this word on Friday, October 11th of 2024. And I saw Tel Aviv in Israel. And then I heard ports controlling the ports. And I heard hostages. Then I heard TV. I saw Al Jazeera TV station or network. And then he said again, who's controlling the ports? Look into this. Then I heard greed. I then saw Israel. And then I saw Netanyahu. And the Lord said, what is he telling you? Then I saw Anthony Blinken, Secretary of State, and he said, Anthony Blinken is going down in more than one way. Truths will be told, and I heard candid camera. All will be revealed. Who's controlling your ports, O oh America? I heard again, Tel Aviv, horrors to come, missile attack soon. And he was telling me to shout it down. Okay, this report is from 15 hours ago, October 23rd, 2024. Rocket attacks set off sirens as Blinken visits Tel Aviv. Yes, that is Anthony Blinken in Tel Aviv while rocket attacks were set off. Israel's Air Force shot down two rockets from Lebanon that set off air raid sirens in Tel Aviv on Wednesday, which is today, the military said as U.S. Secretary of State, guess who, Anthony Blinken, was on a visit. They said some senior U.S. State Department officials and traveling press with Anthony Blinken uh hotel left the breakfast hall and rushed to the shelter downstairs along with the other hotel guests and staff when the sirens went off the downing of the rockets came shortly after israel forces intercepted two drones that was launched from the east targeting the red sea port city of elite the military said so two drones were sent out to the port city the Red Sea port city of Elate, while Anthony Blinken is visiting Tel Aviv. It says there were no immediate reports of injury. The Lord told us to shout it down, right? Look what happened. The downing of the rockets came shortly after Israel forces intercepted those two drones, right? targeting the ports did the lord not say this did the lord not warn us he also said anthony blinken candid camera hmm what is anthony blinken doing over there as they're trying to demolish ports i wonder this is an article saying that Israel port workers in Haifa received Hezbollah message about the incoming strike as if they were warned. Workers at the port of Haifa in northern Israel said that they had received text messages warning them to evacuate or risk being targeted. Israeli media reported on Monday. The text messages told workers that the port's database had been hacked and the harbor would be struck in a rocket attack, according to Israeli newspaper Mariv. It said, we know you are one of the workers at the port. It will be one of the targets of our missiles. The text message reportedly read, we will give you a short time to leave. But operations continued as normal at the port which is israel's largest and owned by a consortium led by india's adonai group now remember in that word the lord said who's controlling the ports right and it says that the ports database had been hacked and the harbor would be struck in a rocket attack who's controlling the ports and it says here it's not specified who who was doing that i find it really really odd 
that the Lord brings up Anthony Blinken in Tel Aviv while Anthony Blinken is in Tel Aviv and there's a port attack. No, I don't because the Lord said it, right? And Anthony Blinken on candid camera. So look out to see what happens next. What did Anthony Blinken get caught doing over there in Israel, in Tel Aviv, while there was a port attack and the port was hacked. And the Lord said, who's controlling the ports? And then he asked this. He said, who's controlling the ports in America? Huh. We're going to leave that right there. And we're going to say, to be continued. But now you guys know what to pray for because the Lord doesn't just tell us these things for our entertainment. Although Jesus does sit and eat popcorn and watch th these things happen because he knows the end from the beginning. And he showed me that many times before. He's not worried about it. But he gives us these words so that we know God is in control. God is speaking so that we can pray against these things. And we know the things that he knows so that when we see these things, we're not in fear, but we said, Oh, okay. God already told us that. And he also told us the outcome. He's got this, right? What type of father would see the enemy coming to attack one way and not tell you he's a good God. When you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, he will tell you these things. He will share the secrets and mysteries of his heart. He will tell you what's to come. Jeremiah 3, 3, 3. And that's why he tells us these things. So when we see these things, we don't fear, right? We said, oh, God already said that, right? Or God already said that that was what was going on behind the scenes. So now we know how to pray for these people, right? Now we know how to pray for Israel. Now we know how to pray for the ports. Now we know how to play, pray for Anthony Blinken, right? And all the wickedness to be exposed, right? And for any tape of candid camera to come out and not be hidden, right? He doesn't want us ignorant to Satan's devices, right? Because knowledge is power, right? My people perish for a lack of knowledge. That's why he tells us things. Because we're in union and one with him. And if you don't have that type of relationship with Jesus Christ, know that Jesus Christ is God, okay? And he speaks to us and he tells us things to come. And there's nothing more satisfying than having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And the only way to get to the Father, Yahweh, is through the Son, Jesus Christ. All glory be to his name. Hallelujah. He's the only one that can save you from hell, okay? You need a personal relationship with him. If you haven't done that yet, just say, Jesus, I ask that you come into my life. I believe that you died for my sins and you rose again on the third day. You bore all my sins to your back on that cross. And I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I accept you and I commit to obey you and pick up my cross and die daily and walk this life out with you. Because I know that you are a good God. And when I die, I know I will be with you forever in, in eternal bliss and glory with you, Lord Jesus. So invite him into your heart today. If you said that prayer and you meant it with all your heart and confess your sins, go get baptized in some water. Hallelujah. If you need help, just email me. All right, guys, press that like button. And if you watch me and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Until next time.